Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's look at another way we can combine functions. What if we had a function f of x, it's equal to um, square root of x plus three. And suppose we have another function g of x, which is equal to x squared plus four. Okay, now we could think of a function that looks like this. We could think of g of f of x. Wait a minute, what does this mean? This means we're putting the output of f into the g function. So it's like we start with an input, we put that input into f, and then we take the output of that and we put it into g, just like that. See how we're reading this from right to left? Anytime we input something into a function, we're always going from right to left. That's like the opposite from reading, but that's exactly what happens when we think about inputting something into a function. Look at the function notation now it's written, f of x. This is on the, the inputs on the left side, the outputs on the right side. So we think x goes into f, goes into g. Oftentimes there's a shorthand notation for this. We use a little circle. Careful, this circle is not a dot. It does not mean multiplication. It means put the output of one into another. If you like, think of it kind of like a chain or um, you know, things chained together or something like that. Like you're putting one function and chaining it with another. This is going to this. So you could think of this function as an output going into the whole, into that function. However you want to think about it, that's just notation. It doesn't really mean anything other than just, it's just the way we notate it, just language. Okay, so we have G, so we could either write this, G of, if you want, you could say that, uh -huh, G of, but we usually leave out that extra F and we just have little o. So G of F right there, of X. And what that means is just put X into F into G. Okay, so, and it's very specific on the instructions. First, put it into F, and then after you get something, put it into G. So you have to be careful. And let's see why with domain. Okay, so let's think about what the expression G of F of X looks like. Well, well, let's, let's see. Well, first we're gonna, Let's take G, right? And we're plugging something into G. What are we plugging into G? So G looks like this. And we're plugging something into it, okay? We're plugging in the output of F when we plugged in X. So we plug in X into F and we get out this. And we take this and then we plug that right in for G. So it'll go into the spot and then marks X, it'll go right in here. This is called composition. That's just the name of it. So composition, you're composing functions. Composition, putting one function into another, um, like one thought comes into another, into another composer to compose some music. No, I'm just kidding. But anyways, however you want to think about it, we just, we call it composing functions or composition um, when we do that. Okay, so we get something like this, stop, don't simplify because this is exactly what, what this code means. It's like code you write in a computer and the computer will read it one way. It'll first do F and then it'll do G. It won't do any simplification in between, which means that the domain has to stand at this step. Don't try to simplify anything right now, but we get just all the X values that work right now at this time. Okay, notice that you know it's tempting to square the square root and get rid of it, that changes the domain. I mean, algebraically, that'll be equal. This will be equal to x plus three plus four, which is equal to x plus seven. But as functions, they are not equal as functions, only as algebraic expressions, not as functions. But, we, but for functions, it's important to know what the domain is. So we stop right here and we look at the one restriction that we have, which is square root. And what does it say? Anything on the inside of it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Subtract three from both sides. We get X is greater than or equal to negative three. So that is the domain 
right there, and we could go from negative three off to infinity if we want to write an interval notation. That is the domain. Or um, this composition of functions right here. And notice that it's not everything because we had that restriction. So we could potentially just rewrite this as x plus seven, but then we got to put a comma. X is greater than or equal to negative three. So this is equal to g of f of x, which it could also be notated that way as well. So yeah, maybe just for sake of this, um, this is only equal to this if we put a comma. So let me just put that comma there so we can be complete there. All right, awesome. Thanks for watching.